Uh, welcome to our uh, Evolve UX at Drupal North. This is going to be a fast user experience uh, feedback session, and we're going to look at a bunch of Drupal projects and help out on the UX part of them. Uh, so before we begin, my name is Suzanne Dergachova. I work at Evolving Web. This is my partner, Alex. He also works at Evolving Web. And uh, we've run our Drupal shop for 10 years. We, we love teaching people about Drupal and doing fun projects. So you've probably heard from us already at the, the conference, lots of us here. Um, so to explain a little bit about this event, because this is actually something bigger than Drupal North. It's uh, Evolve UX is something we, we run almost monthly uh, here in Montreal. We've also run this workshop in Ottawa and we're taking it to Toronto in September. So uh, we have a quick video to explain the process that we're going to run through today in the next hour. It was produced this week, so I haven't even seen it. Yeah, this is brand new stuff, guys. Evolve UX is about improving your prototype. You need to know what to do to make the next version right away. And here's where you can get that. project to the next level. Attendees make content and present it to the crowd. Then we speak in three rounds. First, the audience gives its fast impression. Then people describe what they like about it. And finally, the crowd gives its feedback on how to improve it, what to change, do differently, and why. Also about networking and meeting other great people. It's a wonderful community and everybody helps each other out. You should definitely come and check it out because there's a lot of great things to be learned. Join Evolve UX. that music on in the background and then we'll, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so you heard what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, four demos today. We're going to try and fit them all in. We'll do a very quick demo. Then you guys are going to give your first impressions, like the first thing that pops into your head, kind of like the hashtag, the tweet that you would tweet if you were to see this. Then we're going to do what you like, uh, do a round of that, and then uh, <coughs> constructive criticism. And the presenter doesn't respond when you guys give feedback. They just take it all in, maybe take notes. Um, and so it's, it's up to you actually to provide the content. And so you're, you're a key part of this. So we're going to do the first one. Uh, Annika and Tiff are going to come up and present a design. And I'll let them take it away. Okay. Oh, you're going to be Yeah, I'll leave it. OK. okay. Hey guys, so so we're this is a practice run of oh, sorts. Hi, <laughs> this is a practice uh, a run of sorts uh, because we are showing you how the, the process works. So we we have ringers who have done this before. Um, okay, so we were contacted. Uh, so Evolving Web was contacted a couple a couple of months back uh, for to quote on a Drupal seven to Drupal eight upgrade for the Woodrow Wilson School of uh, Public uh, and International Affairs at Princeton University. It's uh, uh, the mandate was a, a mix of, well, we got to take our Drupal 7 site and then bring it to the future. And, uh, and also, of course, we want to make sure that it reflects our, our, our up-to-date brands, consistent with the university guidelines, and, and really uh, sets the tone for how prestigious and, and well-known this program is. Uh, and, uh, and so this is the existing website. Uh, that, that, uh, the brief was very, very uh, brief, as they say. <laughs> so we had their existing website here. Uh, for showing uh, like a hero image with some news, uh, we we have some some more news, and it's a very <coughs> events-driven organization. So they, they they really are like like evolving web actually uh, are uh, 
bringing their their networking events forward. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they've got a lot of content buried about the, the programs for undergraduate, graduate, admissions, uh, about their faculty, and uh, you know, they have several Nobel Prize winning uh, people on, on staff, either as professors or professor emeritus. So this is uh, this is something that wasn't short coming through very much, and there's a lot of, of course, intranet, directory, all these all these standard things. Uh, it's it was responsive. For, for some definition, but it was clearly not super optimized for that. So this is uh, where we came in and we had to win this pitch. Uh, so we did some design work on spec, which we haven't been doing much, but, uh, but it was a bit of an experiment. And, uh, and so these guys uh, decided to, to come in and uh, both uh, shake things up a little bit, but at the same time reflect the fact that it's, uh, it's still a university uh, faculty and it has to be consistent with the norms of the university. So this is uh, my colleagues Anika and Tiff. Hey. Um, so uh, we wanted to kind of show off some of the stuff that they had going on at the university and we felt that they really liked the idea of videos, we really liked the idea of videos, so we had like a video kind of inspirational, motivational kind of uh, background image and then we move right into like the events and news and uh, things like the dynamic content so that when the students come back it's going to be more interesting. We also had a little social area of the page so that people could easily connect on social media. And then at the bottom we sort of had more generic uh, information that you know like a first time user might need to find coming in. <coughs> so um, we took the content that they already had on their website and we just sort of formatted it a little bit more differently so that it could reflect um, their goals. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So now we start with the feedback. So first of all, what are the first keywords that pop into your head when you hear about this project? University. Is it global? Yeah. Education. Academia. <laughs> Okay, now let's try two phrases of two words or more. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what, are, what is a tweet that you would say to summarize what you've seen? And uh, keep in mind that uh, it's a very valuable part of this process because often what we think we're presenting, a redesign of a home page, somebody else may be focused on entirely different, such as like, wow, this, this thing is, is totally uh, orange or something like that, like an orange website. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's give you your summary of what you're seeing us present. It's, oh, it's dynamic. It, it feels like it presents uh, like a community and, and culture. It's very strong in the forefront. It feels like a law firm, like a law firm kind of, uh, you know, design here. So it's very, like, also, it's very businessy. It's not just academic. It's like beautiful architecture, like the architectural features that come across there. Basically, you know, it's been a um, dashboard kind of thing where events, blogs, review highlights are reflected onto the page, which is, which is actually in the page for the whole page. Okay. Any last thoughts? Oh, I, I saw the before and the after, so the second one makes me think uh, Princeton is more respectable than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now please listen to the next round, which is the positive feedback. What things do you like about this? What's being presented? What do you think works well? What are good things you have to say? I like the typography. It's very, uh, it fits the institution. I think. It's very clean. First. Um, the photos, like there's a lot of photos of actual people. So like it's not just, you feel that it's the institution is probably more about the people than the actual institution. The fonts and the layout of the photos and some backgrounds seem to be more artistic, like less than uh, straight over the academy. You have liberty to think of one more. more artistic sensibility. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of like a sales funnel where like it takes you like step by step into like uh, what they try to like market, and then at the end of the day. It's a, like a call to action, you know, admissions, here you go, sign up for, for the university. So like they show you features of the thing and then 
kind of like a call to action at the end, at the bottom of the page. David? I like the, in the typography, the uh, use of uppercase in a small uh, <coughs> size. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of good in the typography and the, and the grid, the whole fit, the, the white space between the pictures too. So there's something different about this that I like. Any graphics designers in the room? Okay, great. Keep your head low. Keep your head low. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay. Any um, feedback? There's one thing I have a concern about. Uh oh, we're still on the table where you say positive things. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, the picture that you have, in my experience, there's a difference between print graphic design and web graphic design. So, on a print, so it seems like it has this sort of print look to it. Um, I feel like the, the typography does a really good job of capturing the kind of history of Princeton and kind of adding that, that prestige factor to it. Um, but the layout also helps you kind of add like a modern flair, so you kind of have this past and future thing going on, which I like. Okay. Um, yeah, I like the, there's like these little graphical elements that sit in, sit in the boxes. There's a like there's it's it's very dynamic with the um, the the white text like on the background image and then you're switching between and then also the dynamic like the boxes aren't lined up like if you scroll I think it's down there's um you kind of break the grid slightly and it seems like all of this stuff can still be uh, like it's it's very maintainable too. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things, design details. Okay, let's move into some criticism. I know you've all been holding back. So <laughs> we can what take you, it. <laughs> what do you have that could be improved? Uh, questions or challenges? Yes. Um, some, I think there, there might be some contrast issues here and there with some of the buttons uh, being either like the, the writing on top of a background image or maybe the white on orange. I don't know if you guys have a Okay, so contrast issues, maybe accessibility yeah, concerns this, there. The, the gray buttons, the social media there, they seem a bit like. I'm not sure if they, they even pass the gag. Okay. Nathan? So I noticed that in the events uh, area, you kind of like alternate between events with pictures. No, sorry, not events, above the news. You alternate like news that has a picture and then something that doesn't. So that would be interesting for editorial, like they'd have to figure out how to alternate content. So for a demo, it makes sense, you can pull it off, but in real life, does that translate? Yeah. Great. Jorge? Um, can we see if it's done, the mobile version of the website? Yeah, I mean, if it's done. Just resize the window, guys. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, other things? Matt? What do you study there? <laughs> it's uh, political science faculty. You're not supposed to answer the question. <laughs> well, it's, it's a bit confusing in terms of content. I think that's what the carpet is about. But I, I, so I would say something similar. Invert? Well, I was going to, I think you might be doing it. Is, uh, I, I would want to see it at a different size. I mean, from, from my point of view, like the thing that I always I to look for at, at the top of my list is the accessibility. So if you do, you, like you're supposed to be able to go up to 300%. So um, you're going to go in and open that plus or whatever, control plus and see what happens. Okay, so a couple more comments, uh, Ian. Uh, some of the, the stuff is a bit kind of word salad. <coughs> What was to be global and to do what we had doesn't really say anything. And uh, last one, Julie, you have something? Oh, um, just in terms of like competing events over time, maybe have an alternate display with more than three events. Because I don't know what the size is, but sometimes it's one of the three events in a week, so I can see it being a problem. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for your feedback. Good job. So guys, uh, as a, 
as a point of process, what you guys saw is people would sometimes ask a question, uh, and this uh, this format has a very strict rule. The presenter, which I which I broke, of course, uh, the, the presenter is not allowed to respond to questions. The idea is that they have the their like three to six minutes to explain everything, talk about what kind of feedback what, that they want, talk about the work, hopefully not talk about themselves too much, and then and then the the game is now played by the crowd and by the MC. So that's that's a very important part. And then another very important part that you may not have seen is that uh, uh, we were very busy taking notes on, on our phones for all of the feedback. So the, the, it's very easy for a presenter to be flummoxed and, and forget to do that. So don't forget to do that. We were texting the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our next presenter is uh, Mahiki from o Okasi. And she's going to be presenting a project they've been working on. Sorry, I'm short. Um, okay, so this is a website called subtlenet.org. Um, Okasi is uh, one of a few umbrella organizations across Canada that support other organizations that help out um, help out uh, settlement workers, which are essentially people that work with newcomers to Canada, like immigrants and refugees, and help them settle into can life in Canada. Um, so one of the projects that Okasi, which is an Ontario organization, is working on um, is this website. Um, so, the web so, um, the website is meant mostly for settlement workers. Um, settlement workers right now in Canada, they have a problem where a lot of the agencies, they don't talk to each other, the settlement workers don't talk to each other, there's not a lot of communication happening. Um, so all the different organizations across the country, um, they have their own processes and, um, like some of the organizations could probably be doing the work better, but they don't know any other way to do it, so they end up just following their usual processes. The hope is that this website would allow settlement workers across the country to communicate with each other, exchange information, ideas, and learn from each other, and overall improve the quality of settlement services in Canada. So, um, just to give you the development side of things. So this site was not, they didn't have a designer on board at the beginning. Um, I'm a web designer. I started on this project in December. From a design point of view, the only thing I've worked on right now is getting the branding into the site. Before that, it was just pure development work being done on it. So um, yeah, so it's a type of site where, so this is the homepage, um, and it's a type of site where you need to log in to really access content. So what happens when you log in? Is this is this is the dashboard page? Oh, okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so when you log in, this is what you see. Um, so there's three main sections: th learn, connect, and library. So uh, the other issue is settlement workers apparently aren't comfortable actually interacting online too much, um, but they have found in the past that they are comfortable when it comes to talking about professional development. So and there is a, like. Settlement workers are really interested in learning, so they can do their work better, so that's why there's a section about learning. Um, the connect section is where we're hoping that settlement workers will interact a lot with each other and exchange ideas and form groups and whatnot. So, and library section is um, resources that are from various agencies across the country which settlement workers will hopefully use, find useful in their work. Um, and then there's a browse section where you can browse the network by region or by categories. So there's a whole bunch of categories under this section. Um, and yeah, so the reading section. Um, and the other thing is, so users can also add content and add further, so you go here. Um, so this user is the basic user level. You can, you can do these things, but also if you request further access, you can actually add resources and you can also start a group. So um, we're sort of working on still straightening it out, but most of the site is content, user content driven. So that's, that's the goal. Um, and just to give you an idea, so if you were to say, so this is a dashboard. So this is like finding out what's going on on the site right now. Um, yeah. And then like say you go in the learn section. So you get, you get a li list of courses, webinars, and events. And then you can go into say an event, see more about it. Um, yeah, and then so a lot of the content we're expecting, they're going to be the links. They're most a lot of the content is probably going to be links that are actually outside the site, but at least this gives them a place for various settlement workers to collect all the links so that people can get to the 
very scattered, currently scattered links across the web. <laughs> so yeah, so we soft launched this site in end of March. So we're still working on it, but any feedback that people, that people here have would be greatly appreciated. Could you click through some of the other tabs? Sure. Um, so, oh wait, actually. So these are announcements. Um, discussions. We have these filters where you can filter the content. These are groups. Um, and yeah, the library, it mostly looks like like this. And then like you can go to a page and, sorry, still working on this page. <laughs> but yeah, so essentially that's the basic idea. Oh, okay, great, thank you. So again, what are your first impressions? What did we just see? You had to describe it in a few words. Fruit. Great initiative. <laughs> you think great so initiative. too. Okay. Informative portal. Learn and connect. Learn and connect. It was informative portal. Oh, okay. Hi. On internet for a community of experts. Tool. Any other way to describe this, Nathan? Indispensable tool for settlement workers. Indispensable tool. I mean, for that's what you're trying to go for, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Newsfeed. What was that? Newsfeed. Newsfeed. Uh, community of practice. Community of practice. Mm -hmm. Notification. Oh. Okay, let's move into some positive feedback. What did you like about what we just saw? I really, I really enjoy the um, latest activity layout with the line, like the little dots and the way it's splitting into like a header and then Body kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Aiden? Yeah, I, I, I like the uh, highly visible with clear type hierarchy between inside of inside of uh, the abstracts. So, nice and legible. Yeah, that was my Thanks, dude. I like the feedback lesson. It's always available. The feedback lesson. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alex. The lack of bitmap imagery. <laughs> Lack of bitmap imagery. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> it's just tight. Yes. It's very usable. I was going to say, the design looks like clean and professional. Julie? The color palette intuitively just feels uh, warm and it's not, there's a lot of information, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. I think because the, it's warm and the green, the, it seems friendly colors. There's no aggressive brands anywhere. Or, I, I like the hierarchy, you know, the way things are presented, you know, it's very hierarchical, so it, it, it kind of breaks the complexity. Hierarchical, that's good. Annika? Uh, consistent link uh, styling, it's all the same thing, works interesting. I think it has a common yeah. pattern, like it feels very like, like standard <coughs> and like there's a common pattern. It's easy to to find what you're looking for, like the searches where it usually is, and the email and the notification. Again, I like that it's rubber thick and I like that it feels like a tool that could be useful, I could use it, and you're not trying to sell me stuff. Like it's, it's not commercial. Okay, and last one, Alex? Uh, yeah, well, I, I like the fact that it's developer driven as a utilitarian tool and then you're coming later on and, and making it like exciting and, and like as a signal of, of value and craftsmanship later 
If you did it the other way around, uh, it would, would probably not be as difficult. So you're doing it the right way. Right. Okay, let's move into the constructive criticism. What do we think could be better? Questions that came up that you don't understand? Feedback? Yes? I wonder if it's, um, if you have a system to uh, manage uh, spam or unwanted comments and things like that. Mm -hmm. Aiden? Yeah. The secondary navigation elements blend into the background a lot, so the the top navigation looks great. I'm talking about the secondary in, in page navigation on the manage my info. So I kind of feel that oh, here. that's uh, blending into the background, so it might be might well be missed, or not, it's not clear which wh whether I should be interacting with those elements. This yeah. yeah. I wonder if there's like a linear journey or not. Like it's supposed to take like a uh, a settlement worker from like you know the first time they're on the website. You know maybe like have like an E a newsletter email kind of thing and then like uh, taking him from there like kind of like uh, increase the yeah increasing the interest and and uh, sign him up in the future and stuff so like one of there's like a linear kind of process that that's being followed here hmm. yeah yeah I like to see people's faces not be like really like mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah I was gonna just add to that that it because it's consistent, like all the, the profile images, mm -hmm. it seems like there's not a lot of community like engagement happening because it, it seems like it's the same person or it's the same icon uh, mm -hmm. for the profile. I was wondering, because a lot of the information yeah. seems to be organized geographically, if ge geography was really the most important <coughs> mechanism because it seems like a lot of this content would just be the same across regions. I would change the uh, title instead of list uh, activities, something like news, it's more specific because it's basically the news and the uh, article. Sorry, say that again? Latest activity, I would change it for other uh, Change the, the, the title to uh, users? No, latest activity or uh, the section title. Okay. Say news or last news. Because this is just reference to articles. Not activity, you're saying. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I feel like the main like three activities that you talked about, the Learn Connect library, it's kind of it feels a little buried. Just being like the drop down menus, it, it's not front and center in terms of you know, getting to those uh, activities. Matt, way in the back. Uh, yeah, following up on the comment about how, how all the user uh, pictures look the same, I know even if you can upload a picture, like most users never do, so um, like randomly generating something so they look a little different and if the same person is commenting in different discussions, you can, you can uh, identify them visually. Uh, Alex? Yeah, I have a three. Uh, I just thought about that. <laughs> So manage my info is all profile stuff, so you could bury it under the icon in the top right corner. Add content could probably be buried under an expanded plus icon in the in the in the top, but the plus by itself isn't strong or clear enough. I, I would I would I don't know add something mm -hmm. like contribute or something like that, yeah. call to action. Uh, I I like your welcome to settlement.org. Uh, it's lovely, but I, I, it's the kind of thing that I would expect to be able to collapse or disappear after I'm, I'm done with it because I don't need to come back to and see it all the time. I don't know if that's in there. And third, go back to your, your search. <coughs> search for anything. And uh, for the search, I, I love while I love the, the idea of the tabs, low contrast so they may be. Uh, uh, yeah, so for, for here, and I like the filters. Uh, what I don't like as much is uh, having such large cards for each search result. Well, it looks good on a design, but it may not be very practical when people just want to find what they're looking for. So find a way to get people maybe, if you really want several different layouts and default to probably a skinnier one, uh, go up. Then I personally don't like, I get cognitive dissonance from having the two search boxes. Do you really need two? Uh, ask yourself that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, someone who hasn't commented yet. Uh, Kristen, I saw your hand up. Oh, you stole them all. Okay, other Alex. Um, the latest activities, I'm assuming with user tests, people are interested in this. So, 
my experience is that like it's, it's limited value if, if you're waiting for someone to come to the site and then look at the latest activity. It'd be better to have like you listed there, but have some sort of an outreach there so they can subscribe to that if they're truly interested in that, and then that pulls them to the site versus having to wait for them to happen to visit the site for whatever reason and then see it. So really it's just the addition of the ability to subscribe to that in some, in some way. Okay, thanks everyone for your feedback. That was great. sad now because that's what I want my son to be. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> what, what I'm talking about today is a site that actually hasn't been um, done yet. Because, oh, so before um, you start, because yeah. I always forget to do oh. this for myself. This is Catherine. I'm Catherine. I'm from <laughs> Ottawa. I work for an organization called Action Canada for Sexual Health and Rights. And we just um, rebuilt our main website and it's gorgeous and wonderful and we spent months and months on content audit and everything else and then right at the end of it um, or during during the rebuilding of this site um, there was a thing Ontario people might recall that there was a deal with sex ed curriculum being thrown out and um, we happen to have produced a massive shiny pink book called Beyond the Basics that's um, an entire curriculum for sex ed from you know infants up to old people and it has um, aside from the 600 page book um, then we have a companion guide that's another 500 pages of additional resources that teachers might want after going through the book and creating their, their curriculum so we created a thing called the online hub that's called beyondthebasics.online. And um, just about the time we were launching this website, it was a WordPress site that included just a whole whack of PDFs um, that you have to log in to get. So you have to, after you bought the book, then you can log in and have conversations with other sex educators. We made it. Um, locked down to only registered people because we didn't want a bunch of yahoos coming in and saying weird things. Um, so, um, but th that site was hacked. So, what I've done um, also to bring it into line with all of our shiny new group light sites that we're doing for everything else, um, I've got a very basic group light site that is just. Um, you log in and you get access to the book resources. So that's all it is. But what we want it to be is really um, a, a place where sex educators can come and discuss things and blog about how they're using our materials and promote and also to promote the book. And we're also producing an ebook, um, so we'll have hopefully gain some audience members through that so um, anyway so this is what it is now um, the it's um, basically all the design went into the book itself so all I've done here is grab bits and pieces from the book itself and then people come here and log in um, we've added a few webinars we want to add more um, video content um, and probably highlight that more. <laughs> um, could, could you show yeah. us the pages as you're talking about them? Yeah, so this is after you've logged in, you just get this welcome thing, and then the resources are. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. where's your. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we have to click on each. Actually, there's more in chapter two. <coughs> so you get basically a list of the pages from the book, because in the main book, and each of those is just a PDF to download. <laughs> like I said, we have not done anything with this site so mm -hmm. far. So okay, um, okay, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Okay. Thank you. All right. So first off, what did we just hear? Let's reframe this. What's the tweet? Uh, 
companion site to the sex education book? Ruth? Basic site that's beyond the basics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do we like about this overall project? What do we like about the concept, the content, what we've seen? What are good things? I really like the home page. Like it's got a lot of colors, so like it, it's not dull or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. It's interactive, like it's. What else is good? Julie? I just have a question. Is there a graphic elements in the book itself that you can repurpose on site? Oh, that would be a good one for the next round. Okay. <laughs> Questions like that. Question, yeah. Other good things? It's accessible. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So we saw the home page of this page? I like the fact that it's not WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> the, the front page was very uh, inviting and I felt like pointed. There was like a clear like call to action in that in the top. Like yeah, if you scroll to the top. Yeah, like this just seems very like inviting and get your copy, it's very clear of like what I have to do. It feels very very friendly and usable. There. I like the contrasting colors and they were repeated in the hover effect below on the two. Okay, let's switch into uh, let's switch into constructive criticism. So what could be better what questions do we have yes yeah i think there are way too many call, uh, calls to action um, like as a user what do i do do i purchase the book do i donate uh, do i register like there's way too many like paths that this could go through mm -hmm. and also like the use of the word the word purchase i don't know if it's like really enticing to to buy the book maybe like a preview of the book could be given for free to like uh, stimulate reciprocity with the users and then like the user would buy the book if they like it yeah <laughs> what else yes um, on the beyond the basics uh, site i might consider adding chapter titles or section titles to the chapter so you know what what content you're looking at there. Mm -hmm. uh, on the home page it's not entirely clear that it's a book like, i don't even see the word book anymore on there Maybe? Uh, there was a script-based typographic headline font on the interior pages, so I would suggest uh, going to that clean, rounded serif on the, that's on the home page, um, because script fonts are challenging at, at, at smaller screen sizes. And I don't think it's, so I get it's meant to embody the, the brand sort of re representation, the graphic styles in the book with those hand-drawn elements, but I think maybe including some of those illustrated elements would be a better way Oh, can you speak up a little bit? I'm not entirely sure who is the site targeting right? because uh, it seems on the one hand that it's targeting young people uh, because it shows like a youthful image and color and so forth, but those people are not necessarily the ones that would click to buy a book. So if it's targeting them for education, I think it should be more prominent to, for them to have access to information right away. If it's targeting parents, then probably that's good to have the buy book. Um, Alex. The, uh, the IA right now is very much 
subject on the chapters, but I imagine that someone coming here, like here, here, would probably want to be able to search or categorize or filter based on other things other than just chapters, also like topics or you know media types or things like that. Andrew. Um, yes, building on that, the, the levels seem important, the modularity of the content seems important. And so some visitors are maybe interested in some levels more than others. I don't know if they already understand what a level means, but on the home page, um, perhaps maybe not the home page, somewhere there should be a table of contents which is the equivalent of that sidebar menu completely expanded so that it builds a big picture view of everything that's there and it's building on what Alex has said, a way of filtering that down to either only the particular level that they may be in or the age range that it applies to. Uh, maybe a key that says level one is for this, level two is for that. Yes, the middle section here. You all have your hands up. <laughs> Nick, Nick. Sure. Um, is there a way to search the book? I see there's a search, but does it actually search inside the book? I mean, the content's in PDFs. Hard to know if it does. And also, I imagine it's part of the plan to put the content actually in web pages. That would, yes. Okay. <laughs> Kristen? Uh, I think that uh, basically, yeah, there are the PDFs. Get in the page, you know. So then it's distributable across all devices, and it's a bit more accessible. Okay. Um, well, I think educators really like to have printable things. So, but I, I think maybe something where you could click. They'd like to mix and match also. So to click the things they're interested in, and then have them all in one download instead well, of one by one. Hmm. I just noticed the breadcrumb says home and note. So I don't think people know what notes. Uh, Alex, you can say one thing. <laughs> Not kidding, so I'd rather say nothing at all. <laughs> okay, last comment. Ruth. So, I'm um, just picking up from the point that she made. Um, I just finished doing a project where um, it suddenly occurred to me that this is actually quite a good idea, where if you're using downloads, Instead of having them inserted into the various categories, you just have a section, like a column somewhere, which has all the downloads. So if it's referenced in the content, you can link to it, or you can just say there's a download, in the, in, and it's all there in one place. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone, for your feedback. I hope that <laughs> hey guys, so so just uh, while Jorge is setting up, I just want to point out, so what we saw is uh, a design uh, prototype that we showed you in Envision. So clearly that was just the starting part of a design process. Then we, show, we saw uh, uh, like a really quite finished app that was in the, in the, in, in the stage where they're just adding branding and styling. Uh, and, and that I think was quite useful to, to see what kind of feedback uh, that, that received. And, and here, Catherine uh, just showed uh, an app that clearly she, she's, she's beginning to develop. It's, it's an iteration two out of 12, maybe. Uh, you know, it has the content there. And, and that was also very useful because basically she's presenting the idea. She's presenting what am I trying to do? And then the, we kind of said, well, the, the obvious things to make sure you do as you do this is A, B, C, and D. So this is really great. Uh, sometimes, though, we, we have the polar opposite where we have Jorge here who presents uh, a uh, web application that he has been working on for a good two years now, maybe more. Uh, and uh, so this is a quite, a, quite, a, quite a polished, finished product. But uh, the great thing about Jorge is that he's always improving it. He's a, he's a, a designer, front-end developer, back-end developer, businessman, a car lover, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, of course, an uh, uh, evolving web alumni. So uh, with, with that said, uh, we'll, we'll give it to Jorge. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> and Adam's waiting in the hospital. Thanks to the back. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, as Alex said, uh, I used to work in Evolving Web. I once asked them for a break to give a shot to these uh, projects. Uh, somehow it has survived to the last two years. 
So here I go. Uh, so long story short, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, so long story short, uh, my car broke. Uh, and start to find uh, different ways to to get the next one. Uh, I have two kids, so I have to deal with those things. Uh, so I'm really into math, numbers, that kind of things. So I start to analyze different options, and then I included why not? Seeing uh, how about new cars? I was never expecting uh, something like a new car coming from uh, Cuba, where I had a 1958 car. Uh, so I start to explore options, and then I say, okay, I'm going to try to give it a shot to the leases. Uh, somehow it seems to be cheaper in some cases. And then I thought to build something like a tool where you say, okay, let's say I want to uh, see what options I have in the market for a $200 a month vehicle. So I kind of, with that approach, uh, built this website uh, two years and a half ago. Uh, so the thing with lease cost, that's why the name came from. Uh, it's that everything is based in a monthly uh, point of view regarding the payments of the card. Uh, that's why. So doing a hard switch to like a pivot to all the side, I noticed that the audience that was coming to the website was more interested not in new cars, but on uh, what is known as a lease takeover. It means, uh, let's say you go to a dealership, you get a car uh, signed for the next four years, uh, let's say it's a coupe, you have only two doors for you and the partner. Uh, somehow you figure out you have triplets on the way, and then <laughs> it's not going to fit anymore, but you have three years left in the contract. So the least takeover thing is you actually need to find someone, either in Kijiji or somewhere, uh, who is willing to take over your contract. So based on that concept, uh, we created a section called the least takeover marketplace. It's the one I'm going to present. I decided it's pretty wide, uh, but this is the one that's uh, uh, like crucial for us right now. Um, Do you make the font bigger, please? Oh, the font? Okay. Sure. Yeah, so as a disclaimer, that banner on the top is one of our main, uh, main uh, sources of revenues. It's one of partner of us. So you're going to see it anywhere. Uh, and as a kind of a disclaimer, we're going to take it out no matter what, <laughs> because we survive uh, because of many things, and that included. So basically, assume the website starts here. <laughs> 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 to make things simpler. So uh, lease cost, uh, the, this page you see right now is the front of our lease takeover marketplace. That's how we publicly know it, and our customers do. Uh, basically, it targets two types of customers. One is the, the owner vehicle who just know that he's going to have triplets, and the other one, it's the person who is looking for leasing a car, but not with a dealership. He's trying to go after, they, they can see it either from a used car perspective or from uh, like a leasing perspective. So basically, uh, this page is the one that welcomes uh, like a huge stream of our customers. We spend a lot of AdWords and marketing uh, sending people to this page, so whatever feedback you have is going to be priceless for us because uh, we really need it. Basically, uh, here uh, we welcome them to, hey, come over, post your list with us, it's not going to cost you anything. We have some uh, side upsells uh, that we offer, but just listing on the website, it's free. Uh, so here we have filters. There are some kind of hidden. Uh, then we somehow market the latest complete transfer. Uh, we've seen listings that go away in less than 24 hours, some others that take even a year to go out because maybe the person got screwed up when he signed the contract uh, because uh, car sales people are really complicated. <laughs> yeah, and then we have some like a small summary of uh, what we have in the marketplace. Like we have some feature listing, like the recent ones, and then some top deals that are available right now. Uh, so this is the... I will say the desktop version of the website. We have a as like 75% of our traffic comes from uh, portable devices. We have to uh, take care of them too. Uh, we have this blue call to action in many places, inviting people to list the over the car because uh, we have multiple sections on the website, not only the marketplace, but our main uh, purpose is to help them uh, get the vehicle uh, actually transferred. So this is our landing page. 
from here on, I will consider that to be the footer of the website, that these uh, local deals and the, the brand new car deals, this is like spread all across the pages of the website uh, in the same uh, proportion. Like we have a lot of campaigns targeting this specific page. Uh, we analyze conversion in multiple uh, ways, but we're looking forward to optimize or create different variants of this uh, marketplace uh, door. So basically that's it. Like uh, Customers can do a small preview of what each one of the listings have included. If they clicked on it, they can go and see uh, all the details. Uh, this is how we actual, actually display the, the vehicles available for transfer. And basically, uh, I won't take much of the time. <laughs> that's it. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having Okay, one or two people give your tweets. What, what, what did we just see? Consumer friendly. L least transfer. Okay, positive feedback. What did we like? Uh, we know exactly what this website is for. Like, there's no confusion as to the point or the business here. I think that the aesthetics elicit like trust. Would you like to test what we're Yeah. It's kind of laid out in a way that, like, visual hierarchy, you can kind of see where they kind of want you to look at each time. Even, like, the filters, even though it's hidden, like, it's a different color, so it kind of brings your eye towards it to pay attention to how to filter. Great. Good filtering, good color. Yeah, you would write point to actions basically. On the top there's a search saying, you know, what are you looking for? It's new things and on, etc. So you just want to hit the right thing. So. Mm -hmm. I, the, I just like the general look and feel. It does really say all the moment of the code. It's very focused on what you're selling. It's very clear what it is. It looks like a car website. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's move into some criticism. What could be better? What questions does this bring up, maybe specifically about these pages? Uh, two things. Um, I find that it goes for filters. You can choose uh, like a car or a van or an SUV, but there's some crossovers that you might be interested in. And also, I wish there was, uh, I, it's not, uh, I couldn't find the electric car, so like if you become interested in electrics or or, um, or, or the hybrids or things like that, I can see. David? Uh, at the beginning, we saw another screen for about a minute. What, what was that? That was the home. The previous screen. Just give the uh, low. Yeah. Okay. I like the slogan. Again, there are three buttons: a blue button and two black buttons. Those three buttons don't make sense to me yet, totally. Uh, why would I click on one or the other? I'm just saying. So there's something to consider there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, I want to acquire a lease from the takeover marketplace. Is that process done entirely through the website, or do I have to contact the, the person who is going to get rid of this lease? <laughs> There's a lot of animation in French version. If you go in French, there's a lot of English. There's a lot of what? English. Oh. It's not translated very much. And I saw that the, the electric car was switched. Hey So the secondary text that's supporting, so I really like the titling, but the secondary text is quite long. So it's basically going to be invisible and talking on the secondary actions, like possibly, because we've got the primary call to action poster at least, and then the secondary actions I think might be diluting a little bit. And the same comment with the with the small, the secondary text on the least takeover filters. I don't think you need to explain what a, a, a filter, you know, if you're a filter user, you don't need to put a big long sentence to say, explaining it just like three words of sort of filter. Uh... Back here, we haven't heard from you yet. Oh, you're stretching. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, on your home page, like your main image is of the app, 
but I don't want to see any button on the main page to download that mm. or bring you to that. Alec? Um, you've got a element uh, a little lower where it shows the last sold or last uh, yeah. Yeah. contract. But um, I would want to see some more evidence of activity and uh, along with that, uh, some sort of a sense of urgency. So these things are going quick. Maybe three people are looking at this particular lease act now. I don't see the sense of activity or urgency. Mm. Andrew? there's like a lot of calls calls to action and uh, when we go on the other page when there's the statistic of 3,000 Canadian users I think that should be emphasized more with a bigger font no the other page actually the, uh, oh, on the marketplace the one with the secondary text like more than 3,000 plus Canadians uh, use every single day I think the 3,000 should be like pretty prominent in the page and like the text should be just minimized and uh, the white posting with us, I think it's, it just should, like, there should be text there instead of, like, having to click on it and then find out. Like, it should be, like, immediately, like, visible to the, to the user as a, maybe a bullet point or something. Right. Okay, thanks, everyone, for your feedback. Thank you so much. So that's all the time we have for this session, but if you like this format, we do have um, a meetup group that you can join to do more of this. So if you want to present your concept, what you're working on, this is the meetup group in uh, Toronto, or in Montreal, but we're also taking this to Toronto in September. We've done this a couple of times in Ottawa, so wherever you're from, we'll you know, be able to do this again soon. Um, and thanks, uh, David, for coming. David's one of the founders of the Evolve UX concept. And um, yeah, this is really fun. I think the next thing we're doing now is a group photo out in the lobby. So uh, yeah, thanks everyone for doing this workshop with us.